Okay, this is a test. All right, so here we are. We're going to try and see whether we can get this microphone to work as the mic for these meetings. As you know, the sound's been bad. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm just going to walk over here and make sure that we can hear me from over here as well as from over here. Okay. Got that? Got that? All right. Now, hopefully the sound is good. Now, the other day when I did this test, the sound crapped out as soon as I rolled the board up to write something on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the board up and start writing something on it. All right. So let's see what happens. And it has been rolled up. It's not that kind of zine. If you Google that on up, that's what the C is for. Settle on the lab. Ahead from drive, having to be careful about sets that we all know. So that's going to be the next order of business. We I don't know. The audio to actually before the issue with the computer audio is my voice very well across the room. I move the computer. Computer audio. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to move this guy over here. And I hope that by putting him here or her, I'm not sure, 
whatever, maybe if you're non binary computer. But anyway, um, I'm hoping that the computer microphone will pick up my voice adequately all over the room. So, as before, first I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to do a little talking, see what happens, see if the computer audio picks it up. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to walk over here, do a little talking, keep talking, see if the computer audio picks it up. And obviously my voice is going to get a little louder as I get closer to the computer, a little softer as I get farther away from the computer, whatever, no big deal. You guys can handle that. Okay, so now I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes with this audio setup. All right, so we have, there's a mellow Frankel set theory with axioms of choice. That's what everyone is settled on. And as I said, what I want to do now is I want to sort of move along and talk about some sets that pretty much any version of mathematics is going to need, is going to come up with. And these are sets that you've seen before. And part of this discussion is going to be to familiarize you with some notation that we're going to be using throughout the semester. Okay, so moving right along. So let's assume that we've settled on a viable set theory. Okay. For example, DFC, and talk about just some basics from set theory along with some sets that we know and love. Okay. So what is our notation going to be for a set? It's generally going to be an uppercase Roman letter, or in the case of special sets that we use a lot, it's, there's going to be special notation for those. Okay, so we're going to use things like cap A to denote a set. So if A is a set, okay, A can be either empty or non empty. Okay. So, A can be empty, and in case A is empty, we denote it in that case by special notation. And now we're going to scroll the boards up, and here's uh, another test for audio. Remember this crash the audio? All right, so what class is this? Outcomes, events, it looks like EC3100, probability, right? And I know they were in here on Friday afternoon having a discussion section. By the way, now it is Sunday, the 6th of September, so it's the day before Labor Day. As I go over this. Okay. So, anyway, if A is a set, A can be empty, and in this case, we denote A by either phi, the Greek letter lowercase phi, or this kind of notation, a set of braces with nothing in between. Okay. And I'm hoping everyone's comfortable with the concept of the empty set. It's a set that has nothing in it. It's an empty collection of objects. Okay. So A can be either empty or A can be non empty. And if non empty, so it's not empty, we use the notation quote unquote little a element of a. That's how you read that expression there. And I'm sure you've all seen that before in some context or another. To mean quote unquote little a is an element. A. Okay, so a is a collection of objects that little a is one of those objects. Okay. I know we're going slow. Bear with me, it'll pick up. Suppose you have two sets, A and B. 
So if A and B are two sets, okay, there's various relationships that can obtain between them or not, and there's various things you can do with them. Okay, first off, this expression, A subset of B, what does that mean? That means a subset of B. Now, some of you were raised probably with this notation, meaning a subset that may be uh, all of A, or B, I'm sorry, if A is all of B, that's allowed there, and using this notation to mean it's a proper subset, that's, that's not the case in this course. This just means subset, either a proper subset or the whole thing. Okay? What does it mean for A to be subset of B? That is to say, every A that's an element of A is also an element of B. That's all it means. So that's what it means for A to be a subset of B. As I said a moment ago, there's operations you can perform on A and B, and I'm gonna to get to those in just a moment. What am I gonna do first? First, I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna move the computer back to where it was before, and I'm gonna switch the audio back to this thing, which is the thing that's been crashing on us. But I'm gonna change one thing. What am I gonna do? Okay, so select that as a microphone. The computer. Okay, I'm gonna change the microphone back to this and then I'm gonna plug in the HDMI cable. <laughs> okay, now you may say, well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, when the tech support person, the IT service person, Jennifer, was working on this the other day, she, she and I had a Zoom session from my house. I was home, she was here, and there was no problem with the sound, but the one difference was that she had the HDMI cable plugged into her computer. So I'm thinking there's some mysterious thing that might happen when you plug in the HDMI cable. So unfortunately, the HDMI jack is over here, or port, whatever you want to call it, but I'm gonna plug this in. And I'm gonna, whoops, yeah. Now, the one thing I hate about the HDMI Cable. When I plug it into my computer, my screen sort of goes into a little spasm and it becomes small and it's hard for me to read at my old age. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select as the output the, uh, wait a sec, the room speaker so that if you guys who are listening remotely are watching this thing, and you want to comment, okay, you can comment like the voice of God coming from the, the room speakers, right? So let's select this, note notes, select this. Okay, now I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna have the option to select as a speaker, the Celestron, okay. All right, so now what I've done is I've selected the input to the video, the audio that goes into the video from the black box that's been crapping out on us. I've selected the output to be the room speakers, okay? And now I'm gonna keep talking for a little while, and I'm also gonna scroll blackboard. So first I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say, whoops. I'm gonna scroll blackboard down. Blackboard up. And even just to make sure it's not a thing about the front blackboard. Oh, no. Very good. Okay. I'm really hoping at least one of these settings works out. All right. So A is a subset of B, means every element of A is also an element of B. How about a intersect, the intersection of A and B? 
And again, this is establishing notation that you've seen before, probably, but anyway. This means, and here's a piece of notation that you may not have seen, at least in the, at the level that we're going to be using it this semester. And I'm going to write it down and I'm going to show you how to read it. Okay. A intersect B is the set of all. So that's what you say. You, you can say it out loud, or you can say it to yourself if you're like sitting at Luna Street Food or whatever, and you don't want to embarrass yourself as a kind of a nerdy mathematician. You can sort of whisper it to yourself or not even move your lips. The set of all. C such that is colon here means such that C is an element of A and also an element of B. Okay, so again, you read that right hand side as the set of all C such that, and when I say such that, I sometimes do this just because instinctively I'm thinking of that colon. Set of all C such that C, I can't even stop myself. C and A and C and B. Okay. How about how about a union B? Does anyone have a suggestion for for what a union B might be? Nick, you can't answer all the questions, okay? Got to have somebody else. Right. Hermogenes. Yes. All you do is you replace one word on the right-hand side. A union B equals a set of all C such that C is an element of A or C is an element of B. And this or, by the way, means non-exclusive or. It doesn't mean it can mean C is an element of A, or C is an element of B, or it's an element of both, A and B. Okay? So that's standard notation, and I, I want to get that set of all things such the thing going on in your head so you understand that as well. Okay. All right, so that's basic set theory notation. Now, one set that any version of mathematics that's useful in the real world needs to cover, needs to include as a set, is the natural numbers. So one important set that quote unquote any useful version of math is the natural numbers. All right, so what are the natural numbers? And here's something where, you know, some books say it one way, some books say it the other way. My version of the natural numbers includes zero. Okay, some people don't. And what we do for this, we write an N that looks like that. That's our notation for the natural numbers. And that's known as a blackboard bowl, N, cap N, because it's hard to write bold letters on the board. So this is what we do. We just put an extra thing there. And then, by the way, in LaTeX, we do this to get that. OK, so N equals the set 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. So it's all the non-negative integers. We haven't even talked about the integers yet. I said, said that word, but that's what it is. Okay, now you may say, wait a minute, last time um, you, you asked Alec Wyatt what 17 was, and he wasn't able to come up with a good answer. And here, not only does your set have 17 in it, it also has all the other things in it. Zero, one, two, three. What are those? What are those? Well, they're kind of mathematical abstractions, but it turns out there are ways of making them concrete. Okay, you can actually define each natural number. And we're not going to do this in this class. I'm just saying this, is, this can be done. Okay, so caution, note that, that the sort of 
the what they are, the quote unquote essences of the elements of N are are up for debate in some sense. But what they are doesn't really matter. What matters is that we can work with them. There's certain things we can do with them that work no matter what the ontology, no matter what the essences of them are. Okay, but this debate doesn't affect what you can use these things for. Do with them. Okay, so one way, by the way, and this I mentioned this in the monograph, one way of defining the essences of these things is you let zero be the empty set. You let one be the set consisting of the empty set. You let two be the set consisting of the set consisting of the empty set. Now, all these things are different, they're all sets. The set consisting of the empty set is a set whose single element, it's a non-empty set, but its single element is the empty set. Get it? Okay. And so on. But don't worry about that. We don't worry about what these essences are. Okay. Now I'm going to pause again. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, let's see, one other config I want to test here is use the computer audio along with the HDMI cable. So I'm gonna to switch to my computer audio. Oh, damn, I was using, uh, uh, sorry for my four letter word, I was using the uh, computer audio in that experiment. So this final experiment is going to be using this guy as the input and the slash John, that is to say the room speakers as the output to make sure everything works, okay? All right, so anyway. Where were we? Okay, so that's what the natural numbers, we don't care what they are. We care how they interact, how do they interact? Well, notice you can make the following observations about something. First of all, N has a natural ordering on it. So we can talk about something being greater than something else or less than or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Okay. So the set N has natural ordering. All right. There are two operations defined on N. So on N are defined. Two operations. plus n times, okay, and both of these operations What do you do the two things? Okay. And that just involves product and that multiplication distributes over times. Both of them something that guy, you get that guy back. That you multiply by the element. Anybody? And identity 
Specifically, if you take two integers m and n, take their difference, whatever that means. We, we you know we talked about it. You know, I forget. I don't, don't want to. Okay. You take the larger of the two and you subtract the smaller of it. You find the thing that when you add the smaller of it, you get the larger, and that's going to be the distance between the two. Okay. All right. So end of experiment. Okay, and this video might serve as the first piece of a re-delivered Thursday, September 4th, 2020 lecture, the one that didn't score to the web, depending on how the sound worked. So I will now sign off.